Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is the video solution for the second quiz for Chemistry 302. Um, so the first part of the question asks us to sketch the radial wave function, R of R, and then also the radial probability distribution, P of R, for a 4px one electron orbital. All right. So uh, to start, let's just jump right in with the radial wave function. Um, the general shape of the radial wave function came from the notes, and that's something that you just had to have remembered. Um, but there is one thing that we can calculate ahead of time, and that's the number of radial nodes that are going to be in the 4px orbital. The formula for radial nodes is radial nodes equals principal quantum number n minus angular momentum quantum number L minus 1. For, that's, for us, that equals 4 because we're talking about 4px minus 1 because p, or sorry, a p orbital has an angular momentum quantum number of 1 minus 1 equals 2. So that means the graph of our radial wave function needs to cross the axis two times. So uh, if you take a look at the notes, you'll see that the uh, wave function for a p orbital starts at the origin of this r of r versus r graph. So we're going to start it at the origin. We're going to begin positively. And then we'll hit a maximum. Come down below the x-axis. We've passed our first node, second node, and then this asymptotically goes out to infinity no longer crossing the x-axis ever again. So count our radial nodes, one, two radial nodes. We can even draw in plus and minus signs here if we want. One thing that was commonly done incorrectly but that I didn't take off any points for was the asymptotic nature of these maxima. So if I drew two dotted lines on your quiz, that just means that I want you to realize that these maxima should be decreasing in intensity as you go out to R. So the first maximum is always the highest, and then this asymptotically decreases, and then below the x-axis, we have the same shape reflected. But again, that wasn't worth any points. That's just something for you guys to remember for the future. The important part was that you got this graph beginning at the origin, and that we had two radial nodes. The second part of the question was to draw the probability distribution um, given by the formula uh, shown in the text of the question. Um, graphs for this question were pretty loose. You just had to get the general shape right. And the way that that looks is when you take this function, square it, and multiply it by a factor of 4 pi r squared, you get two small secondary maxima in the probability distribution, and then the primary maximum out here at high r value. And then that tails off. The important part of this graph was that you've got that these um, intent, or sorry, these the value of p of r increased proportionally to r. And so as long as you drew something that looked mostly like this, you've got the one point for it. All right. So once again, let's label these here as the secondary maxima. Cool. So that takes care of the top half of the question. Most of the people got um, most, if not all, of the points on this half. The tough part seemed to be the second half, where we take these graphs, which come to us from quantum mechanics, and change that into the sort of working picture that we use down here on the bottom. So now we're going to sketch the total wave function, or the picture, of the uh, 4px orbital based on what we drew above. So I have 4px. I'm going to start over again in the same way by calculating radial nodes. 4 minus 1 minus 1 equals 2. Mm, sorry, that's cut off a little bit. So. Improvise a little bit. How about that? All right, so we've got our radial nodes, and we also need our angular nodes now because we're going to be drawing the picture. 
angular nodes are just, the number of angular nodes is always equal to L, or the angular momentum quantum number. So um, L equals 1 for a p orbital, so we have one angular node. If you recall from the discussion, we talked about the angular nodes. A few of you asked about whether there were angular nodes in an s orbital. L equals zero for an s orbital. So no, there are no angular nodes. And that's why it has a perfectly spherical shape. Not actually relevant for answering this question, but just a follow up note. All right, so now I've got, I know that I have two radial nodes, and one angular node. And now I'm just going to sketch that in with the general shape of a p orbital. So how do I start? We know that it has a dumbbell shape. So I'm going to draw one lobe here along the x-axis and one lobe here along the negative x-axis. Now to get this totally correct, you had to include the amplitude changes. Um, so I'm going to shade one of these to show that it's negative phase and the other one will be my positive phase. Okay, so this would be a correct picture of a 1p orbital, but we can't stop here. We have a 2p, we have a 4p orbital. So I'm going to sketch in one radial node as a dotted line. Just one radial node. You notice I haven't drawn in the angular node explicitly. But here it is. The y-axis here is our, radi or our angular node. The p orbital never crosses the y-axis. It just exists on both sides of it. So that uh, we've already represented our angular node by not drawing anything in the middle here. And then I'm just going to continue on and finish out this picture really quickly for you guys because it becomes a little bit repetitive. So I've drawn another lobe. I'm going to shade that in. Shut this negative. We'll do the symmetric lobe over this way, not shade that to show that it's positive. So this alternating um, shading is reflective of the alternating amplitude of the wave function that we drew up here in part 1a. So now that I've sketched in this, I'm going to draw my second radial node. Not perfect, but I'm a scientist, not an artist. And then I'm going to draw in the last lobe. Even bigger than the second one. Great. So I'll shade this one in to show that that's negative. So, important parts of this graph. Drawing. Angular node here, that's the YZ plane, as some of you noted on your quizzes. Got two radial nodes. These go all the way around because they're spherical in nature. So one radial node, two radial nodes, and then I've got alternate shading or phasing on my uh, P orbital lobes. So I have a different colored pen here. If I just sketch around, kind of trace the outside contour of this, and... Tracing this outside contour gives me uh, the p orbital shape that you know and love from organic chemistry. One final note, uh, a problem that a lot of people had was rather than drawing the px orbital, you drew the py orbital. Keep in mind that there are three different kinds of p orbitals. So if I draw three different Cartesian axes here, this is y, x, z, y, x, z, y, x, z. P, x points along positive and negative x. P, y points along positive and negative y. And P, z points along positive and negative z. So uh, you lost a few points if you drew the orbital pointing in the wrong direction. And it's important to be able to differentiate between these three because that's going to become important a lot later when we start to draw molecular orbital diagrams in the course. Anyway, I hope that that covers uh, completely the solution for the quiz. And as usual, if you have any questions, you can seek me out wherever 
I am.